University and Google DeepMind. So Diana has been a pioneer researcher in reinforcement learning and, artif and general artificial intelligence. And she recently has done a lot of very impressive work on reinforcement learning theory. And she is not only a professor at McGill and also I think she's leading a research team at Google DeepMind. Is that right? That's correct, yes. Okay, yeah, please, it's all yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the invitation uh, to speak at this workshop. Uh, I'm going to talk about some uh, recent work uh, that is about to appear in NeurIPS uh, that was uh, spearheaded by my PhD student, Scott Fujimoto. And it's also a joint collaboration with David Meager, who's a robotics professor at uh, McGill and Mila. And uh, the work uh, concerns uh, experience replay buffers in reinforcement learning, and we're going to discuss an equivalence between loss functions and non-uniform sampling in experience replay. Uh, so first of all, just a quick refresher, uh, what is experience replay? It's a technique that is very widely used in uh, reinforcement learning agents that use function approximation. And the idea is that the agent interacts with the environment, but then this interaction, the samples of states, actions, rewards, and next states, actually get stored into uh, a buffer, which you have here uh, on the screen. And then whenever the agent wants to train, is going to uh, sample some mini batches from this buffer, uh, use the data in the mini batch to do an update, um, and then uh, it's going to uh, continue this process. And so we really have, uh, you know, while the agent is interacting online with the environment, we really actually have uh, a memory of its experience and we're going to keep sampling uh, from that memory. And in some sense, this is a trick that was initially uh, introduced by Long Jilin back in 1990. He was a roboticist and he uh, just wanted to make sure uh, that data did not get lost because it's very expensive to produce. Um, and also he wanted to make sure that if his robot uh, somehow happened upon a really good trajectory, that it would um, use that trajectory sufficient amount of time to really learn from it. Um, the, this trick was popularized really by uh, DQN, uh, in, which uh, was motivated actually uh, by attempts to uh, make reinforcement learning more like supervised learning. Um, and so to uh, ensure that uh, reinforcement learning agents uh, didn't have so much correlation uh, in the data that they were training on, make the samples more ID, which makes uh, these agents uh, better suited uh, to use uh, deep neural networks. And another sort of side effect of this is that it ensures that older experience that the agent might have had before doesn't completely get forgotten. So in other words, if the agent has visited some part of the state space and then moved away from there, if data from that part of state space is still in the replay buffer, the agent is still um, going to, uh, to be able um, uh, to, uh, to rehearse on that data. Now, there are different ways to uh, control the replay buffer. And so by controlling the replay buffer, what we mean is which samples do we get? Uh, which of these uh, samples here are we going to get uh, from this free play buffer? And of course, the, the simplest thing to think about is to do uniform sampling. You just like sample at random, uniformly at random, uh, some number of examples, those form a mini batch and that goes to the agent and the agent uh, trains on this data. Um, Another popular technique is recency-based sampling. This is uh, more akin to traditional online reinforcement learning where the recent samples uh, are more emphasized compared to the older samples. One technique that was introduced by uh, my colleague at DeepMind, Tom Shaw and, and others uh, is called prioritized experience replay. And the approach there is to sample preferentially uh, examples or transitions that exhibit high uh, temporal difference learning error. Um, now, why would that be useful? Well, if, if there's high uh, TDR on a particular uh, example, that means that we have the potential to learn a lot from this example because our previous prediction was quite wrong. And so sampling that data over and over again gives the agent the chance to learn a lot. And intuitively, if we have an example that we sample a lot, its TDR is going to reduce and then some other examples will become um, sort of more popular in this replay buffer and we'll get sampled more. 
Uh, so this idea can be viewed actually as a sample based version of prioritized sweeping, which was an uh, algorithm introduced by uh, Andrew Moore back in the mid 90s um, in the context of, of dynamic programming algorithms. The idea there was to uh, prioritize uh, updating certain states where uh, their, their next state had received a big update. And so here we can think of this uh, as the same idea but we would like to do this in a sample-based way. Now, using prioritized experience replay is very popular, has empirically proven to be much more successful than uniform sampling. However, it is uh, somewhat more cumbersome uh, to implement uh, because now we need to have a priority queue for the examples and they have to be uh, resorted in this priority queue. Um, and also, of course, uh, the TD error uh, can be kind of noisy, and so uh, that may lead to uh, some amount of um, variance uh, in the updates as well. So what we're going to, to do now is uh, discuss one fairly simple uh, but powerful idea, which is that prioritized experience replay is equivalent in expectation to using uniform sampling, but with a modified loss function. Um, and so the implication of this result is that we can actually replace a prioritized buffer with a regular buffer where we do uniform sampling. We're just gonna need to modify the update that happens uh, on each transition. Uh, the non-uniform sampling might still be uh, in theory uh, reducing variance, but empirically actually uh, it turns out to be uh, quite similar and sometimes worse than this approach of using uniform sampling. And of course we can take this idea and then implement it in algorithms. And so we have in the paper uh, two algorithms uh, that are described one which uh, sort of simplifies prioritized experience replay based on this idea and one which uses the uniform sampling equivalent, uh, which we call PAL. And we're going to so show some empirical results, both in Mujoko as well as in Atari tasks. So I will show you uh, the main idea of the paper and really that's kind of the, the important uh, bit here. And you know, otherwise there's, uh, there's a lot more details, but um, the main idea is the following. Consider uh, a particular transition, the ith transition that we've had. Um, and so now we're going to denote by delta i the prediction error that's computed here. So that could be a TD error for uh, policy evaluation, or it could be a Q learning error if we're doing Q learning, right? Basically, whatever uh, sort of error uh, your RL algorithm wants to compute on the sample. Suppose that we have some kind of a generic loss function. This could be mean squared error or Huberized loss, whatever it is that we're usually um, estimating. Okay, so this takes the prediction error and B squares it or computes its absolute value. Um, and now we want to estimate the expected value of the gradient uh, under some sampling distribution B. Okay. And the gradient is taken with respect to some parameters. Uh, parameters here are denoted Q in order to emphasize the relationship with the value function. Now, suppose that actually we don't have access uh, to Q, but we only have uh, uh, to B, to the sampling distribution B, but instead we have access only to some other sampling distribution D. Is there a way to compute this expectation? Well. Uh, we have a way that has been established a long time ago, which is based on importance sampling, right? And the idea in importance sampling is that if we want to compute an expectation with respect to some other measure, we can introduce here some important sampling corrections uh, and then uh, compute the expectation just the same way. And so we can, we can do important sampling on the gradient. And if we have uh, access to P of B and P of D, then we can do these corrections. And uh, of course we can compute these expectations by sampling as well. All right, so the uh, intuition in this paper is that in some cases we can replace the content of the second expectation uh, by a gradient of a different loss function L2, okay? 
And so if we had a way for the gradient of L2 to match these important sample corrected gradients of L1, uh, then we could actually just do sampling from D, compute this gradient with respect to loss uh, L2, and everything would be good. Um, and so, uh, okay, this is this is somewhat interesting, but the question is, are there any circumstances in which uh, this actually uh, turns out to be a computable loss or, or a loss that, that makes sense? And so one interesting situation to consider here is a relationship between uh, the mean squared error and an L1 loss, okay? And so uh, if you imagine taking the gradient of a mean squared error of delta i, delta i, think of them as, as TD errors, okay? Um, what does this mean? Well, when we take the gradient, we can uh, sort of uh, compute what this comes out to. And we end up with the expression here, which is basically an averaging of um, TD errors, okay? Normalized by, uh, by the absolute value of the TD error. And so this quantity here is actually proportional just to the sign of the TD error, which is just, of an L1 loss on the TDR. And so we go from the expected gradient of a squared error to the expected gradient of an L1 uh, error under a different distribution, okay? And this distribution is the distribution that we would obtain uh, by doing a uh, prioritized experience replay where the prioritization happens with the absolute magnitude of the error. And so prioritized experience replay could be achieved using uniform sampling and the change in the error function as, as we see here. So this is the, the key idea or this sort of uh, example, okay? But we can of course make this into a more uh, general theoretical result. And so the result is stated here. Um, if we have uh, two loss functions and some priority scheme, which is denoted here PR, um, if we consider uniform sampling, uh, we can obtain uh, an equivalent uh, gradient by sampling with a prioritized uh, buffer and modifying the error function, so long as we have this relationship between the gradients of the two different error functions. And so uh, this uh, basically can be shown to be true uh, if we have the relationship uh, between the two uh, loss functions that's described here in equation seven. And so uh, in particular, we can uh, use as a priority uh, the uh, magnitude of the prediction error delta, and we obtain a relationship uh, that uh, is actually very weak between uh, the two functions. In particular, uh, if uh, the sign of the gradient of the uh, first loss using uh, delta i is equal to the sign of the gradient of the second loss on delta i, and the priority is uh, given by the ratios of these two gradients, then the theorem is always satisfied. And so uh, while the, you know, the special case that we analyze in the paper has to do uh, with TDRs, in fact, one can uh, use this for uh, really any kind of losses, including, uh, for example, eligibility traces, versions of uh, Q-learning, uh, SARSA, and so on. Now, another question is what implications this has on the variance and um, the variance of, of the gradient actually uh, can be better in the uh, non-uniform uh, sampling case. Really, whether the variance is, is better or not actually depends on the particulars of the priority scheme uh, and the loss function. And so now um, we've actually also derived a special corollary here uh, using uh, Huber loss uh, with prioritized experience replay. Um, 
And so we can actually derive analytically uh, what loss we would need to use when we have a uniformly sampled uh, buffer. And that's, that's the expression here. Um, and so uh, one thing that, that uh, comes out of this expression when we analyze this loss uh, is that prioritized experience replay, in fact, is going to be uh, biased. Um, something that's a bit harder to see when you look at the algorithm rather than uh, looking at this loss. Um, and uh, the bias is towards the median of uh, the samples rather than towards the mean of the samples. Okay. Um, but this is bias is something that we can actually control okay, by playing around with the way in which the sampling happens. Um, and also uh, with, uh, with these uh, hyperparameters here. And so we can essentially, we now have a knob that allows us to do prioritized experience replay with a trade-off between its bias and its variance. So we've uh, tried uh, these algorithms uh, on several tasks. One is a set of uh, Mujoko environments, which are uh, depicted here. Um, and we uh, have as a base uh, algorithm uh, TD3, which was uh, prior work of, uh, of Scott's. We're also comparing against soft actor critic. Um, and now we can look at the algorithm combined with a prioritized experience replay, as well as uh, our two proposed algorithms. One of the algorithms is just like prioritized experience replay, but uh, eliminates uh, the bias. And the other one is a version of the algorithm, which uh, basically um, does this with a uniform buffer using the loss function that we derived. And so what you see here uh, is that, especially in the harder environments like humanoid, uh, these proposed uh, algorithms are actually uh, quite a bit better um, than the others. And uh, as expected, uh, the two uh, algorithms, the sampled versus non-sampled version, are actually pretty close to each other. Um, as, uh, of course, as we would expect in theory, no doubt that the theory is an expected uh, version, whereas uh, here we have, of course, uh, samples. Um, we uh, can look at Atari results. Here we are combining these ideas with double DQN. And so the blue lines are double DQN, uh, the orange lines are double DQN plus prioritized experience replay. And then again, we can eliminate the bias of prioritized experience replay and also um, add this uh, uniformly sampled buffer. And uh, as before, uh, we can see that the proposed algorithms uh, tend to be better, not always, but tend to be better uh, than the other versions. Um, you know, there's uh, still issues of bias and variance that crop up, but there are some environments like frostbite, for example, where uh, these results are actually uh, quite significant. Um, we also include here a comparison of uh, the final performance uh, in these Atari games. And so here we are looking at um, the uh, proposed uh, algorithms that we have, and we compare them against double DQN plus prioritized experience replay and uh, plain double DQN. Um, and so uh, these uh, bars are the percentage improvement obtained over these two baselines. And if you see the bar going below zero, that means that actually we were worse than, than the baseline uh, on those particular domains. And so these are the, um, you know, on the x-axis, you can see the different uh, environments that we have uh, tried. And so uh, what you can see is that there are some cases where uh, the proposed versions of the algorithms have quite significant improvements. There are also, also some cases where uh, they are worse uh, than the baseline. So this is not always uh, a guaranteed uh, improvement. Um, but uh, generally speaking, uh, controlling for uh, the bias uh, tends to be uh, quite uh, useful. Um, and so the tables here actually uh, summarize these results um, in numbers and 
looking all at the mean and the median gain, and you can see that uh, the improvement is uh, pretty significant. So I'm going to uh, wrap up here. Um, the main message is that we now have a nice and clean way to understand experience replay, which also allows us to do uh, an easy, more streamlined incremental implementation of the algorithm. Um, we have gotten some uh, empirical experience, uh, but more, uh, of course, would be uh, quite beneficial. And also we haven't really uh, explored fully uh, the space of possible losses. We've focused on this huberized loss, which is uh, typical of um, the agents that are used uh, in practice, uh, but actually exploring the space of different uh, loss functions or that can be put on top of the prediction error uh, could be quite interesting. Um, one of the things that, that I would like to think about uh, in the future is actually um, this issue of, in fact, getting rid of replay buffers. And I think this is going to be a little bit controversial, perhaps. Uh, but of course, uh, the origins of reinforcement learning were in incremental learning, where an agent can interact with the environment and immediately use those samples. And from that point of view, the replay buffer seems to be a kind of crutch uh, that an agent needs to use in order to make sure that its updates are actually stable. Um, and so uh, it would be interesting to think about whether we can go back to uh, a setup where we can do uh, incremental updates on correlated data, data that is streaming in on a trajectory, uh, and still um, perform well with uh, neural networks. And uh, the loss functions that we have uh, discussed actually uh, give us some hope for this because uh, these are loss functions that we can now actually uh, consider sampling uh, online uh, as the data is coming in. So I'm going to uh, stop here and I would be happy to take any questions if there are. So Gerga says, I have a question regarding the new loss substituting the Huber loss. Does this loss inherit the bounded gradient property of the Huber loss? Um, so that's a great question. And I think in the particular case that we looked at, yes, that is true. But in general, for any pairs of losses that we have, that need not uh, be true. Uh, and so that may need to be an extra condition. So if, if instead of thinking of, of this particular Huber loss, we would think of uh, something, uh, of, of some, some other loss function, I think we would need to have a way um, to actually uh, ensure uh, this, uh, this bounded gradient property. Okay, uh, thank you, Diana. Um, yeah, very interesting talk. I, I think, yeah, I just want to clarify. So um, so the improvement in the algorithm is to replace uh, prioritized experience uh, replay with uniform sampling with a different loss, right? So Hello? I think we might have lost Mengdi. <laughs> I think so, yes. <laughs> Hopefully she will reappear. Um, I was also curious, maybe while she, we're waiting for her, um, very nice talk. I was also curious a little bit of whether um, maybe I missed it. If, if you think this also highlights whether we could do other forms of like uniform resampling with other types of loss functions that might be even better. Uh, yes, so I believe uh, it should be very straightforward to do this. Um, you know, what would be a good loss function? I think that is very much an open question. Um, and so the tools that we have in the paper perhaps give a way of uh, carrying out the analysis for other loss functions that we might want to try uh, and, and other ways of prioritizing the replay buffer. But in general, what we want to optimize, I think is very much an open question and may well be dependent on, on the problem. Mengdi, you cut out halfway. <laughs> yeah, I dropped. I dropped the ball. Yeah, I was going to ask. So, um, so does this uh, different um, sampling mechanism 
affect the exploration part of the algorithm. So will you still using epsilon greedy exploration or does the new sampling uh, technique allows like smarter exploration? Ah, that's a great question. Uh, we were still using epsilon greedy and uh, you know we've tried uh, entropy regularized uh, versions as well. Um, I so. Yes, in principle, it could be possible to leverage this somehow in the exploration method. Uh, of course, it's also perfectly easy to uh, combine something like, for example, exploration bonuses to just fold it into this algorithm. Um, we haven't really thought about this problem and uh, it'd be a, a nice avenue, I think, for, uh, for future work. Mm -hmm. And the, the notion of equivalence, so that's an exact equivalence, right? So it's, it's equivalence and expectation. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Do we have other questions? I think I answered Gergo's questions. Um, okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, our 